Okay, so if you need a little refresher on what ions are, I thought it'd be helpful to make a little screencast for you, so here we go. This is the basic ideas about ions. Ions are any charged particle that we deal with in chemistry, and we can classify them falling under two main categories, monoatomic ions and polyatomic. Monoatomic ions would be ions like sodium ion. In this case, sodium we would call a monoatomic cation. It's a cation because you'll notice it's positively charged. So we have a monoatomic cation, the example is sodium. We could also have a monoatomic anion, and a key example of that is the chloride ion. So we call those negatively charged ions anions. And notice that the magnitude of the charge is denoted by a positive or a negative sign. And if you had more than one, for example, barium forms a plus two charge, we would write it like this. It would still be classified as monoatomic because it's made of one element and a cation because it's positively charged. And you could have other examples for anions as well that have a magnitude greater than one of charge. Oxide is a common example, or it's also an anion with a minus two charge. Now we can also have cations and anions that are composed of more than one element, and we call those ions polyatomic. And on the back of the periodic table that I handed out in class, you have a list of the most common polyatomic ions, but I'll go over a couple here. The most common positive polyatomic ion that we'll see in this course is ammonium, which has the formula NH4+. Plus. Notice again, this is an example of a cation because it has a, a magnitude of charge that's positive, and it's polyatomic because it's comprised of atoms of nitrogen and hydrogen. An example of an anion would be something like nitrate, which has the formula NO3, and that's an example of a polyatomic anion. And there are lots of other examples, so I'd encourage you to check out the back of the periodic table that I gave you. A fundamental idea when we start to study nomenclature is going to be that ions combine, and when they combine, they form a classification of matter called ionic compounds. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how these things come together and in what ratio and the reason why. Most ionic compounds are neutral, which means they have no net charge overall. Even though they're composed of charged particles, overall they combine in a ratio so that there is no net charge overall. So let's think about how that can be. Um, first, if you want to be able to predict charges, uh, we can use the periodic table to do that. The location of the element on the periodic table often can be used to determine what charge or oxidation state it forms. If it's in group 1, group 1 is right here, it's going to form a plus 1 charge. Group 2 always forms plus 2. Now, if you get into the transition metals, their charges vary, with a couple of exceptions. And the exceptions are zinc, which is always plus 2, and silver, which is always plus 1. The rest of them tend to form multiple possible charges. So we do something special when we get to nomenclature there. So understand that the transition metals, we can't predict them that easily right now. The next group over tends to form plus 3. And then as we look at the halogen family, starting them from the right, they tend to form a minus 1. The oxygen family, a minus 2. Nitrogen family, minus 3. Carbon is unique because its family can form either plus 4 or minus 4. Okay, so you really have to look at the other ions that it's bonded with to be able to predict what its charge is. So let's get back to this ions forming ionic compounds problem. So let's say that we have two ions, a sodium ion and a chloride ion. Now notice the sodium ion is smaller than the chloride. That doesn't really matter. But remember what I said. The ions come together to form neutral compounds. So the question I have to ask myself is, how many of each would it take so that they could combine to overall form a neutral compound? To do that, I look at the magnitude of the charge. And for sodium, each ion has a plus one. For chlorine, or chloride, each ion has a minus one. So if I put one of each together, they form the compound sodium chloride, which I can symbolize here. And overall, 
the charges cancel. So we record it symbolically as NaCl. So even though it's comprised of charged ions, we still just put symbolically the chemical symbols and there's no net charge overall. Let's look at another example. So say you have lithium ions and you have an oxide ion. Well in this case we see again that the charge of lithium is a plus one but here the charge on oxygen is a minus two. So I know that just one lithium won't be sufficient to balance out the charge. So I recognize I need two lithium ions in order to come together and form this compound. So all these will come together and we'll record it Li subscript 2 O. Now that 2, that subscript refers specifically to the number of ions that are involved. And notice that we never have to show when there's just one. Okay? It's in implied. Okay. So that's a basic overview and remember the key things here. Ions combine to form ionic compounds that are neutral. We can classify ions as monoatomic, polyatomic, and then within those they could be either cations or anions. Hope this helps.